Can you believe it's been a decade since I started pontificating on literate programming? I am Howard Abrams. In 2015, I spoke at this Emacs conf where I described my challenges I called literate DevOps. The conference wasn't completely virtual, even though I was. My city of Portland was suffering a citywide electrical outage and I was without power, so I gave the talk in the corner of my friend's living room people online asking questions and wondering about literate programming. I also see comments explaining why literate programming hasn't caught on in corporate practice. I often don't engage. I mean, is the online arguments and chatter over ignorance or preference? Sure, we're wired differently. I mean, my favorite programming languages put the parentheses before the function name. Literate programming has come a long way since Knuth proposed it in the 19th century. I feel it's come a long way just in the last 10 years. Obviously, this interest is due to org. I don't think I would bother if all I had was Knuth's original preprocessor. But since I'm talking to fellow nerds about an open source project without corporate backing, let me change the title of my talk and repitch. Literate programming in the 24th and a half century. People often ask if I still program that way. I guess they want to know if there's any long-term benefits. For many of our tools and our workflows, while initially tantalizing, often don't last. But yes, when I sit down to write a program, I create a file with an extension of ORG. I guess you can say a program literally. Let me be transparent. Do I use literate programming during my day job? Yes, but only for personal tools or for initial investigation. At the end of the sprint, I tangle the file and git commit that. My personal projects, on the other hand, are org files and since I can't show you the code from my day job, I'm afraid my example code will have a lot of parentheses. I'm sure you won't mind. I like having my Emacs configuration in org. It's pretty bling. It has over 8,000 lines of code. I know, I can hear the screams and gaffs over the network. However, the surrounding prose in org adds 10,000 lines, and those lines are non rap paragraphs. I mean, is that large? I mean, sure, we've all worked on larger, so I guess it's not huge. But come on, it's still significant. Advantages? Look who I'm talking to. I'm sure you know the advantages, but indulge me. I feel that one advantage of literate programming, especially with large code bases, is how you can organize and manage the complexity. Most programming languages tame large bases by putting code in separate files. While org can too, with org we can group related functions together under expandable headlines. Uh, here's one. You can kind of see that I've got different sections grouped together. In my original talk, I mentioned how I would attempt to organize my thoughts before coding. I appreciate how I can look back at my notes. In my Emacs configuration, I review the pros to help memorize key bindings. My section on getting email working with Emacs using not much means creating small collections of scripts and configuration files. I can tangle them all from one org file. I like that I can explain each part separately. You just can't Beat having links back to Stack Overflow or that GitHub repo where you stole, I mean, became inspired to write your code. Literate programming may push the boundaries of our workflows and revealing some abrasion, but we aren't solely working with org. We have the flexibility of a Lisp engine to file down those rough parts. You may have your concerns, Perhaps you could reach out to me and with particular issues, maybe we can figure something out. But here is my list of frictions, and the rest of my talk demonstrates my answers and my hacks. The goal in literate programming with org is that it should not require more effort 
than non-literate programming. For instance, I shouldn't have to type much more than regular programming to get my code literate. I also shouldn't have to worry about the state between my org file and the source code. And I want to be able to jump around my code just as easily. Let me explain more. I've created some templates using Yaz snippets. And since I used to, I was used to the old org tempo feature, my habit has all the snippets starting with a less than character. I'm not sure if I should demonstrate all of them as you may be doing something similar. I like to build on top of characters to remind me that if I just enter a less than s, I need to put in the language. But if I append a mnemonic, I can get a full language. So why not do that with a full function definition? In this case, I'm smooshing one yaz snippet inside another one in order to save myself some typing. My point here is to pay attention to what slows us down or hinders you from getting the advantages you want. Do you ever forget to tangle your code? You can append this code to the bottom of your org file so that it gets tangled every time you save. I've written a function so I can visit that tangled file and then return. I've grouped all my functions together. I've taken a cue from Charles Choi, you know, kicking Vegas, and his casual feature set. But instead of transient, I've just made a Hydra uh, using the major mode Hydra package. Anyway, this allows me to use and remember my micro optimizations. If you set the comment property to link, the tangled output is back connected. This allows us to edit the tangled code and have it update the org file. Personally, I don't like this. My source of truth is the org file, and I tangle as a one-way diode. Often, a block of code will reference a variable or call a function to find in another block of code. In my original literate DevOps talk, I discussed how to use the output from one block into another block by naming the first block and referencing it with the var for the second. However, if all the blocks use the same language, you can use sessions, which create a persistent REPL behind the scenes. Let's evaluate the blocks of Python code in this file. The evaluation created a Python REPL. It's available in another buffer. This buffer matches the name of the session, but with surrounding asterisks. Evaluating a code block sends it into the REPL, and now I can work with my code blocks interactively. That's not quite right. I primarily hack an Emacs Lisp, and textual changes to variables, functions, or macros, unless you habitually type Control c Control c may not represent the state of your machine. And a similar effect happens in any language that uses sessions. Sure, I can move the point to a block and evaluate, but I have three functions that allow me to evaluate all blocks in a buffer, or all blocks in a subtree, or I can, without moving the point, evaluate any block I see. Now, this function here evaluates all blocks in a buffer. And someone once mentioned calling this function when you first load a file. I'm not sure that's a good policy. I mean, have you not written a bug? Since this function right here evaluates only visible blocks, we can limit what Emacs evaluates to a single org mode section. For instance, with the cursor in one section, I can evaluate just the blocks in that header section. If I can see a block, why clumsily navigate to it when I can extend the AV project to just jump to it? For instance, Let's pull this, this file up. I can jump to any of the four blocks. I think that's quite slick. Now why navigate to a code block solely to evaluate it? Yes, this is a terrible example, but these three blocks set a variable to different values. So without moving the point, I can evaluate any one of them. 
To be honest, the reason why I wrote this is because I often forget to evaluate a block after editing it. I've moved on and I just don't want to jump back. Now I can just evaluate from a distance. I apologize for the previous terrible examples, but I'm quite pleased with this feature. As I mentioned earlier, in a large code base, we organize code by library or module, and each file contains a class composed of methods, functions, variables, fields, yet literate programming in org files allows me to add a semantic organization layer where I can group related concepts under headlines. Now, while this isn't specific to literate programming, I wrote a little user interface to allow me to jump to any heading in any org file in a particular project. These are the heading in my Emacs configuration project. Notice the file name beforehand, before the colon character, the header name and its parent headers are after. Let me search for the LSP sections. Maybe I only want the ones for Python. Now I use ripgrep to search the files and then some lisp to parse the output. Unless someone has already done this, I should package this up on Melpa. What about jumping directly to the definition of a function, variable, or what have you? We can use Emacs' built-in XREF library, but these functions don't understand that the source code is in org files. When I started using Emacs 30-something years ago, I would pre-index my source into tag files, but the Dumb Jump project uses the newfangled and faster text search programs like RipGrab to find a symbol in real time. So I followed this pattern and wrote an extension to the XREF API. Now I want to jump around my code from both the code block or in the surrounding prose. What about jumping directly to the definition of a function, a variable, or what have you? We can use Emacs' built-in XREF library. But these functions don't understand that the source code is in the org files. When I started using Emacs 30 something years ago, I would pre index my source into tag files, but the dumb jump project uses the, this newfangled and faster text search programs like RipGrep and the Silver Searcher to find a symbol in real time. So I followed this pattern and wrote an extension to the XREF API. I want to jump around my code from both an org code block or in the surrounding prose. Now, I'm sure it comes as no surprise that my presentation is just an org file. Let's suppose my cursor is on this symbol. I wrote this function for this demonstration. We can jump to the definition and I can jump back. Notice it jumped into an org file and back out. References, unlike definitions, is where something is defined and where it's used. Well, you know how the XRS system works. Here I can jump to the definition or, you know, where it's used. And of course, jump back. I think this is cool. This should be a nifty package on Melpa. But my code is specific to Lisp, and I'm not completely sure how to make it general. For instance, what is a symbol? If you know the language, this is obvious. But what should the language be when your cursor is in the prose of an org file? Python only supports sequences of alphanumeric and underscores, but in Lisp, a symbol can be almost any character sequence. I've been stewing on how to do this, and I have ideas like prompting during the first query or scanning the language based on the nearest code block. Yeah, I think I'm babbling. Ooh, in true geek fashion, I dived into the details before answering some better questions. In my original literate DevOps talk, I explained the advantages of initially writing down your thoughts, your plans, goals, sure, the user requirements. But what do you do with all that luscious prose afterwards? Well, you do the same thing you do to your initial code. You refactor that prose. Just because the text surrounding your code is now a first-class citizen doesn't excuse bad code. 
you want something more from both your code and your prose. The prose of your literate program isn't just regurgitation of the code in the block. You want something more helpful. You're really writing a research paper to yourself. I know what you're thinking. You've seen my Git repos. I'm guilty and not always the best example. However, I do get great joy when I see someone ask about something in Emacs and my response is little more than a link to some online repo um, that I've rendered as a website. I'm out of time. I hope this has been interesting philosophically as well as practically, as I think literate programming is the cat's meow. I'm afraid this summary slide is about my home-baked solutions that fit my needs, but hopefully you can recognize your pain points and address them. If you don't need my literate DevOps-specific techniques for connecting code blocks, I suggest using Sessions by default. I highly recommend looking at your workflow and writing snippets to give you less typing for org blocks. I now jump by headlines in my projects, but extending XREF to support org files made literate programming as easy as programming the old-fashioned way. I do need to make it more general to put up on Melpa, though. Thanks for watching. Happy hacking, my friends.